Hello students, welcome to another part that is on the hybrid electric drive trains that is HEVs. Right, so in the drive trains we previously saw about the configurations of the drive train for the hybrid vehicles. Also we saw about the topologies that are being there in the case of the hybrid electric vehicles. In this video we will see about the power flow that is being controlled in the different condition of the hybrid electric vehicles in the different topologies. We will generally see about the power flow that is being required in the case of the series hybrid vehicles and parallel hybrid vehicles. Right, the other two topologies power control is not needs need to be understood because they are generally not being used in number of any vehicle. So we will see about the power flow control in the case of the series hybrid system and parallel hybrid system. First the power flow control why the power flow control is required in the hybrid drive train. Right. With the help of the proper power flow control first we can achieve the maximum fuel efficiency if we supply the fuel or if we run the engine only when it is required. Right. If the power of battery is sufficient then we will not run the engine and we will only supply the power from the help of the battery via the electric motor and if that is sufficient then the fuel efficiency that we can achieve will be maximum. Right. This is the need of the hour because the increasing prices of the crude oil can be very tiring for us and because of that we want to achieve the maximum fuel efficiency that can be possible. Second thing is the minimum emission, right? The minimum emission can also be achieved with the help of the very optimum use of the engine, right? The engine will only be run whenever it is 100% required for the vehicle to be running. For as if the load is more or if we are normal driving the vehicle, then engine will have to be used. But if the vehicle is in the idling condition at that time, we can only supply the power to keep the vehicle in the running condition with the help of the battery and that can reduce the emission at very drastical level because the maximum emission compared to the fuel bulb is generated during the idling condition of the vehicle. Next thing is the minimum system cost, right? The number of components and number of system components that is required in the hybrid system should be kept at minimum by achieving the proper power flow control in our hybrid system vehicle. And the last thing is the good driving performance, right? The performance during the driving of our hybrid vehicle should be good and should be comfortable for the driver as well. It should not be like he has to choose between what supplies the power to the vehicle. It will be connected or it will be selected automatically with the help of our hybrid control system. So first let's see about the power flow control in the series hybrid. Right, we have used only one letter for each component and first let's see which are the components. B is for the battery, G is for the generator, M is for the motor, P is for the power controller, converter sorry, the E is for the engine that is IC engine and F is for the fuel tank. Right, and T is for the transmission that is connected further depending on the number of component clutch gearbox if used or if not used depending on the system. Also you will see that the dark block line is used to denote that it is an electrical link. The small single line or the thin single line that is being used to suggest the hydraulic link and the two parallel lines is given to suggest the mechanical link right so you will very clearly understand from this schematic diagram that which power is transmitted from which component to our transmission system so let's see first mode in the first mode you can see that it is for the normal driving or for the acceleration right for the normal driving or you can say for the acceleration at that time the power from battery and also from the engine the 
both the powers will be directly transmitted to our transmission system. You can see in the figure 1a that all the arrows is pointed towards our transmission system. So this is simply during the acceleration the power needs to be transmitted in the case of the series hybrid vehicle. In the second mode on the right side figure 1b you can see that that mode shows us the light load. In the case of the light load, the power from the engine being generated is more than the power that is required to keep the vehicle in the running condition. So extra power that is being generated from the engine will be transmitted back to the battery with the help of the power converter. At the P block, you can see that the arrows are going in two opposite direction. So one thing, the power main power is going to our electric motor which is further transmitting the power to our transmission system. Also the extra power which is being generated in the engine is transmitted to our battery to charge the battery during the light load condition. Next thing is the mode 3. In the mode 3 you can see that deceleration or the braking is being shown. So in that case the engine will not generate any power. But the power from the transmission you can see the regenerative braking system. Right. So the power from the transmission is transmitted back with the help of motor. In this case motor will work as a generator. That power will further be transmitted to our power converter. And that power from the power converter will be transmitted back to our battery for the charging of the battery. So at the time of the braking or deceleration the energy that is going to be wasted will be used to charge our battery that is known as the regenerative braking system. And the fourth mode that is vehicle at stop which is I have told you idling condition. So in the case of the idling condition you can see that the vehicle can be run or vehicle engine can be kept in the running condition and that power can be used to charge the battery once again and to keep the vehicle in the running condition vehicle at the stop condition the power will be transmitted with the help of the electric motor so these are the basic four modes that can be occurred during the condition of the hybrid system all the things with will work with the help of the power electronics or we can say with the help of sensors. So driver does not need to select which mode is used. Right. According to the different speed, according to the load condition, the sensors will decide which power needs to be supplied to our transmission system. This is the figure for the power flow control in the parallel hybrid system. There will be slightly different approach in the case of the power flow control of the parallel hybrid system. First mode you can see in the figure 2a that is mode 1 is known as the startup or we can say during the starting acceleration of the vehicle. At that time the load on the vehicle will be maximum. So our transmission system will require the power from the battery and IC engine. Right, so both the systems will supply the power to our transmission system simultaneously. Right, so this is how simply during the acceleration power will be transmitted to our transmission system with the help of battery as well as IC engine. In the figure, that is second figure, figure 2B, you can see the mode 2 which is for the normal driving condition. During the normal driving condition, as I have already told you, in the parallel hybrid system, the battery will not supply any power, only engine will supply power to our transmission system and that will be sufficient for our normal driving system. Right. So only IC engine will work when we are normally driving our vehicle and the battery will not supply any power as you can see in this figure 2B. In the next mode, mode 3, figure 2C, you can see the again braking and deceleration mode is given. In that, the power from engine will not be generated, right? The engine will be switched off or it, we can say in the closed condition. 
and the power that is coming because of the deceleration from the transmission can be further transmitted with the help of motor which will work as a generator via power converter and from that power converter power can be transmitted to the battery for the charging of the battery right so this is how again the regenerative braking system will work in the parallel hybrid system as well and the last figure you can see the figure 2d that is mode 4 that is light load condition so in the case of the light load condition the difference from the normal driving that is figure 2b and figure 2d that is light load condition the difference is only that that engine is generating more power than the required for the transmission system so the extra power which is not required for the transmission will be transmitted back to the motor that motor will work as a generator and that generator will transmit the power via power converter to our battery for the charging of our battery right so this is simply how the power flow should be controlled in series and parallel hybrid vehicles right so in this video we saw about how the power needs to be controlled the flow needs to be control of the power in the case of the HEVs from next lecture we will see about the electric vehicle configuration and the topologies of the electric vehicle until then thank you so much